cataractcoach.com, nanophthalmic eye challenges, a tiny eye, shallow anterior chamber, small pupil, glaucoma, and more. Truly 10 out of 10 difficulty. Look at this case here. Large surgical PI that was done in the past for angle closure, small pupil, dense cataract, shallow AC, 15 millimeter axial length. This is a very tough one. Putting just a little bit of viscoelastic in the eye looks like placing some pairs and TCs incisions for iris hooks. Break that sneaky that's there and get these hooks in. Place them a little bit and they don't fully tighten them up just yet. Kind of go round and round, meaning put in the, all the hooks and do a little bit of tightening and then come back and retighten all of them to get a little bit more stretch here. This is a very challenging case, very tiny eye. And so what are you going to do differently here? Well, there are high risks in this guy, right? Think about it. Now, certainly here is going to do a little bit of a pyridomy and do a little tiny bit of pars plana anterior vitrectomy. Now, the catch here, think about this, in a 15 millimeter axle length eye, where's pars plana? So you'll do this and you just got to make sure you're not going in peripheral retina. You'll have to look at the patient in the post-op or immediately on the OR table, look at the entry site and make sure there's no entry site breaks. But after doing a little bit of vitrectomy, not much, do a tiny bit of vitrectomy, a couple seconds worth, then put more viscous in the AC, then a little more vitrectomy, et cetera, back and forth. Do that until you have the correct AC depth. If you go in the eye and do just a, too much of the anterior vitrectomy, you'll get too deep of an anterior chamber. So here's getting a capsule rex is done, not easy. These are my least favorite eyes. I love a big myopic eye, so much room. Now, because you already have viscoelastic in the eye, you just can't fill the whole thing with tripen. You have to do a gentle painting like that. And so it looks like previously that wasn't the capsule because previously that was just breaking off some of the sneakier the fibrotic bands. And here you need to get a good size capsule rex. It's hard to judge because remember the white to white is also very small in this eye. And so now going with the FACO probe, which just looks massive. Oh, beautiful chop. So this is a super difficult case. In a case like this, you may want to consider doing a lot more than your typical top gland anesthesia. And so you can do retrobulbar if you need to. Just be careful with the volume that you inject. You can even do this under general anesthesia. Now, some surgeons will also do a little window there to help prevent the choroidal effusions, which are common in these tiny eyes. In this case, surgeon didn't elect for that. Probably not needed, but it could be beneficial. So here, taking out these pieces, I like that chopper placement to protect the bag. And now let's see, this is a very high power lens. In the USA, the highest power we have is 40 diopters. This is 57 and a half. Wow, look at the funny lens design too. And so this lens could get damaged if you place it through an injector. It's such a high power, so thick. So certain here, just gonna enlarge the incision and place it in the eye. And then obviously at the end here, putting some sutures to seal that up. But wow, what a tough case. Let me tell you about the top podcast in ophthalmology. Yeah, Cataract Coach Podcast. Check it out. I won't belabor the point, but if you want to be successful as an ophthalmologist, why don't you have other very successful ophthalmologists teach you all the secrets? An hour a week. Best thing ever. Now, here comes some sutures. Looks like some 10 nylon. Suturing up that incision. And here, I'd probably suture that sclerotomy site too. Take the trocar out. And there, yep, good idea for that one. You're probably using a Vicryl. You got it. And then let this patient have some time to heal up. Now, for the eye wall calculations, it's actually very challenging. In these eyes, think about it. Moving the effective lens position just a fraction of a millimeter changes the eye wall power by a lot. And it's very hard to predict what is going to be the proper effective lens position. Think about a big myopic eye. If the eye wall power is low, let's say the eye wall power is zero. They're so myopic. When I think about it, it doesn't even matter where the effective lens position is. The power of the lens is zero. But when the power like this is 57 diopters, a fraction of a millimeter movement of that lens forward to back changes the refractive outcome a lot. So again, here I to tell the patient not to expect a perfect planar refractive outcome. We'll make it better, but there's no chance we're making it perfect. You, didn't, you weren't born with a perfect eye. So here at the end, sutures going in, closing up that conjunct type, a beautiful result. This is a very challenging case and it was performed beautifully. Thanks for watching. Remember, that podcast every week, everywhere where you find podcast services.